Heathrow Airport, Thursday morning, October 22nd. First night in Gibraltar. This is the view from our balcony. It's about 8.15 in the morning. Heading up the rock. Along our path, we've seen quite a few of these. Okay, so we're looking out onto Spain and get a better idea of the importance of this part of the rock and mounting guns if at all possible. So during the destruction of the American Revolution, while the British were taking care of those rebels, the French and Spanish took the opportunity to try and retake Gibraltar. The British troops stationed here as part of the defense and reinforcement created the tunnels and in fact were the siege lasted for three and a half years and ultimately the French and Spanish were defeated. It was this major niece, E. Ince, whose idea it was to build these tunnels in order to get the guns up the side. Example of the rope curve, the mantlet that would 
provide some cover for the soldiers. On our way down to the Moorish castle. So this tower really stood as a another means of defense for Gibraltar. See, they took some hits over the years. It's the Moorish element in the ceiling. One of the small, what was later become a chapel room. Once the Catholics retook. States, probably from the, from the tower, the top of the Moorish tower or castle, look out onto the edge of Fort Gibraltar, and in the distance you can see the, the mountains that are already Morocco. It's one little fellow saying goodbye. So we leave their area, their domain. So long. Bye. We're in the only cemetery used in Gibraltar since the 1840s. The previous spot, uh, the burials were stopped because of health concerns. So, really, right across from the rock. And uh, that's the building we're in. And this is the Jewish section, which uh, part of which was actually taken over for the airport. That's a hangar there. Just taking a look at some of the stones are engraved a little bit differently from our tradition. Looking at part of the wall that surrounded the original part of the city around the rock. And there are a few of these tunnels from one area of the town to another. Then a way up from here even you can see the Moorish Castle. Start on Devil's Tower Road, and we go into the casements area, main line. We into all these are in the town. Took the cable car up. Here now, we're about to go into Casement Square again. And last evening, we were, walked along Main Street and then went down Farmer's Lane, or no, Farmhouse Lane, to the Flemish Synagogue. happened this morning. Activity is restaurants aren't yet full but they will be shortly. Another cruise ship is docked. We haven't come across a lot of clocks on public buildings that are correct yet. But that's okay.
the early 1500s and adopted by Gibraltar for all time, whether or not it was under Spanish or British rule. This smells ship just docked also. You can only see one eye because this other one is an eye. The Cathedral St. Mary is built on what had been the spot mosque. And then when the Moors were driven from Gibraltar, it was taken over by the church. The original tower, not the one we're looking at, was uh, again adopted by the church. And the compound was a little more than three times the size of this now. It was enclosed, the courtyard with orange trees and the like. Uh, most of it was ceded to the government for the rerouting of Main Street. The lower level of the Gibraltar Museum, there are the remains of a Moorish bathhouse that dates to around 800. Uh, this area was conquered and then sometime later settled by the Moors coming over from North Africa. They wanted a foothold on the Iberian Peninsula. And so uh, this is one of the structures for the city that they built. And this would have been one of the hot rooms. The star-shaped openings in the ceiling would have let in light. Beneath the hot waters would have been pumped through under the floor. Looking onto Cathedral Square, which has the Cathedral of the Holy Trinity, which was built originally as a hospital and then consecrated as a church in the early 1800s in a Moorish style. So it was never, in fact, a Moorish building or a mosque of any sort. These are referred to as the officer's barracks. Learned the officers who had been used as officer's barracks, now used as uh, government offices. This is the courthouse right on Main. Across the way is the governor's residence. It had been a convent. And we just walked up Governor's Lane, which uh, we saw many mezuzot, uh, which would make sense because it's very near to the different synagogues and to the school. The history of this building, this is the King's Chapel, 1560. And this was originally erected as a convent, and now it's the official governor's residence. Well situated on Convent Place is kosher bakery and coffee shop. Right next door to Solomon Lee. Right outside the city walls, this little old cemetery called Trafalgar Cemetery which is something of a misnomer because only a couple of the folks laid here in fact fell at the battle. Most here victims of one of the yellow fever epidemics between 1810 and 1814. We made it to the beach and in fact it is the Mediterranean. Over there is Spain. And way out there somewhere is the other end of the Mediterranean. So we can now say we've been at both 
be eastern and westernmost, or pretty close to eastern and westernmost spots of the Mediterranean. Bayside Marina area. And this is a moored ship that is both hotel and casino. On our way back from the marina area, we're on a walkover bridge. And it's a great angle to see the Moorish Castle. Chepchowan from Tangier. You can see already the Rift Mountains, which form the eastern border with Algeria. We're starting our day tour of Chepchowan, or Chowan. Uh, the blue walls, and explained, is uh, because indigo is so inexpensive. And Salam, our guide, is taking us through. Chipshawn was originally built in 1471, and uh, over 40,000 residents in the city itself, and closer to 75,000 in the surrounding area. This is some of the wood that's set aside to heat the water for the hammam, which is up the uh, lane a bit, um, the uh, warm bath. So, so, We're looking out onto this newly built wall. Make out. And we're standing on the terrace area of the largest mosque in uh, town. Down onto the so this is part of the original Kasbah from 1471. Which uh, used to be and still is a workshop area. Uh, the uh, upstairs would be used for rooms when people would come into town, the donkeys and all would be tended down on the bottom, and the people who needed overnight lodging would be upstairs. And it's still an area where uh, handmade goods uh, are made, and, um, and this fellow here is uh, uh, an iron worker and um, is making keys and the key chain hooks. This is our excellent guide, Salam. Okay, we're at Ras Al Ma, which is uh, the head of the waters. Um, essentially, the water is coming down from the mountain top through, and so this is the water supply for the Medina, the town. And uh, you can see the the water rushing down. This is also a washing station for clothes washing. The scrub board uh, right here next to us is a fig tree. 
and um, uh, most of the food is already been harvested. So we're up on the mountain a little bit and we get a beautiful view. Town, city, <laughs> some olive trees, some cactus growing, fig. and fig. sun coming peeking through from the far. So this is the Spanish mosque we're looking at, which really is not used because of hard feelings going back to 56. In the cemetery, and even the, uh, the tombs, the grave sites are... Okay, so there. it's a millstone for the Olives, which you can see some olives still on the tree here, to make the olive oil. And it's powered from by the US. The West, West English? U United States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this, is your, so this was the entrance to the Jewish neighborhood, referred to as the Mela. And honestly, it doesn't look so different from other areas. But so, we just some of this area updates back to the late 1400s. Enjoying an open market. This is referred to uh, as the Andalusian Mosque. It was built by Andalusian refugees during the early 16th century. This is a room in Shaman. A little entranceway where we've stored our bags and we have our bedroom area, which is really pretty and airy. Blue tile, even the bathroom. Sitting here in a little restaurant, and who should walk by but Obi Wan Kenobi? Just enjoying our mint tea with some Moroccan pastries. A little afternoon break. This is the dining room yeah. of the Orpheus house with the mosaic and dolphins which represent uh, fertility. Evokes the idea of Berber Perfect. This would be a private imam bathroom area. Yeah. 
study the colors just to get a hint of the, the blue and the vibrant colors here on the floors. And this is all the, um, right near the, um, the this is a mosaic, this is all a private home. travels down. The smaller olive press we saw a bit before and that would be handled uh, by perhaps two slaves and this would be handled by uh, the um, donkey mm -hmm, or horse. So this was a place of Capitol Hill area of this. And this is the forum area of the city for market and public gathering. The stones, the rocks were brought from these mountains, primarily by Berber slaves, transporting them on elephants. Let's take a look at the magnificent floors here in this house. by one of our, the main gates. This was one of the royal Last cities. remaining uh, Hebrew educational institutions. Mm -hmm. What about the Jews? We can say that we do have two families in the world. 
We do have the uh, Berber Jews, that's how they are used to call them, and they say that they are used to belong to one of the lost tribes, then it takes you to 5,000 things. UNESCO protected site knowledge is one of the most beautiful gates in the world. 17th century. Off in the distance would be the Mela. And here's the sport. I don't believe the tourism in Magnes, it's the only business so we're in the market. Uh, place at Magnus. Um, many sweets are being sold. So this entire area, which is often referred to as the stables, is actually still just all for the barley to feed 12,000 horses. This was in fact moved at the time of the uh, earthquake. Here it didn't um, withstand the earthquake like the previous day. So this uh, opening here was used to drop the barley, the grains through, and this is where it was all stored for the 12,000 horses uh, that protected the palace, uh, the castle area. They are restoring very uh, badly what they are doing here. They did this three years ago. I like the French when they say that restoring is smarter than building. Fed by underground springs. One, this is the, one of the gates to the palace complex. You <laughs> store protecting his nest on top of the wall that at one time surrounded a palace, which was destroyed in the earthquake and which was never rebuilt and in its place of golf course was built surrounded by the wall inside the mosque that now serves as a mausoleum for the late king each area is designated depending on what time you arrive from there. Again, one of the rooms for ovulation in what originally was built as a courthouse, then became the king's tomb and also serves as a mosque. Approaching the blue gate of the Medina. Yeah. Of the Hindu gate. Balak, it means watch out, get out of the way. It's and a of donkey coming. this is uh, the green of Islam, is on the other side of the blue. We're here at the spot, which has uh, been recognized as the home of Maimonides while he lived in Fez. On the outside of Maimonides' house was a very elaborate system to hold uh, brass plates where water would drop into and this would assist in telling the time. The entranceway of the madrasa we're both visiting and you can have beautiful work on the walls and of course all of the child work. That's why they would do that. Yeah. Well, it happens to, 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 to my children. They think they it's terrible. Right. It's terrible. Right. 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 This uh, palace is right near the opening of the Mela, which is the Jewish quarter, traditional Jewish quarter. And that was typical uh, because the Jewish populations typically were under the special uh, protection.
of the kings. Coming up to the Abu Dhanan Synagogue. Okay, so this is the peek into the mikveh that is uh, accessible from this stairway here. And we're in the inside the Abu Dhanan uh, Synagogue. This is the Parochet, it covers up the Torah, which is on deer skin as is traditional for uh, Moroccan synagogues. Here's our guy. And from here, the pulpit, and it was last uh, actively used by the last rabbi here. Uh, back in continuing the, the tradition or predating our tradition. These seats are donated. Heading down to the mikveh area. Mm -hmm. This is the balcony where the women's section is in this synagogue. This is some of the beautiful traditional lamps. Rift Mountains. And you can see the, uh, the Medina. All oh, the way around. So, and anything from, from clothing, like she, yeah. she did these. Really? Yes. yes. We're at the ceramic factory. It's about to trim. Let's see. Tajine. Small tajine. Mm -hmm. Then we have to get the top. Separate from the dish. Fuel yes. it's used, it's actually that which is left over after the olive press. So they're tiny bits of olive and olive pits. So the residual oil uh, helps feed the fire and uh, the pits burn very nicely. Depending on the size. Design, which design it's with you. This color, the one here, it's purple now. When it's pink, it's it turns dark. dark. It's the symbolic color of the town. That's the color of the town. And the bell is working on the tiles. And the fellow is working with a special hammer to trim the different tiles to the correct shape. So the small tiles on the more complicated pieces on the bigger surfaces for a tabletop, it's all assembled upside down and um, sometimes it has to be affixed with a bit of the black soap. So these marble tables are made primarily with Moroccan marble and uh, again assembled in the frames like we saw. So assembled upside down and a gray cement is then applied atop and uh, then left to to the uh, big uh, exhibition you know they have. Okay. Now. It's the initial cleaning of the hides. These uh, bats have an ammonia derivative. These are goat skins that are being dried and the saffron is applied to help the process and also Sir, give it a better undergoing color. a restoration. You can see some of them with the different colors for the dyeing of the wool of the uh, skins. Mm, interesting market process of construction. Well, part of the process. See some of the finished products. And this is one of the sources of the uh, ammonia. It's uh, pigeon excrement is used in the vats. 
They're tumbling and washing the hides here in this big wheel. This is the sitting area of our Riyadh in uh, Fez, it's Riyadh Mabuka. It was a private home for one family. And the uh, roof is retractable, so uh, that was added as a concession to the weather for Riyadh guests. But in the past, it would be open and be able to uh, rain right inside into the little fountain. And um, the water, there's a very, very slight step. The water would be able to drain uh, so that uh, all of the rooms on the first floor were room here. Sitting area, beautiful floors. relevant part of the door where we come in and out. Take a step up into the bathroom and it is again quite beautifully appointed. And we've been really very comfortable. But outskirts approaching the bath. Groves of trees and a number of the animals come up right close to the highway. And not quite sure what's being sold, but we think it might be almost like a chestnut. Driving along the expanded entrance to Saleh, which is a twin city with Rabat. Newly planted palm trees and elegant street lights. Udaya Kazwa. So Entrance way to our hotel in Rabat. It's Riyadh. And Riyadh El Kazar El Akhazar. And it's uh, referred to as a luxury Riyadh. Checking in, they're able to accommodate us a little early. We arrived about 11:30 after an almost two-hour-long trip from uh, Fez earlier this morning. The center area of the Riyadh is very beautiful. Get the open roof area. Usually, this one has a lift. Before we're joined by our guide, which is wandering around a little bit on our own, down the street from our Riyadh, Al Khazar, past a number of uh, buildings that house artists and works, and uh, beyond these, art uh, buildings, there's some market area. Here is the fortifications that we'll learn about in a little bit. And down by the water. children uh, go to class along with children chosen from uh, around the country specifically for grades and diversity the uh, prime ministers and the royal palace 
pieces. This wall was originally uh, set up as a fortification by Jakob, and uh, that was in 1150. That dynasty ended in 1199, and uh, the next one decided not to continue uh, residency in this entrance, which is just across from the uh, 1150 fortifications, is from the early 14th century. Looking out onto uh, a minaret, which is that which remains from an earlier Islamic dynasty, when this area was developed into uh, a smaller fortified coastal town on top of Roman ruins, which can be spotted through the trees here. Originally, this area was also called Salah or Shalah. And as time went by, people migrated across the river and established a town across the river that we've already referenced. And that became the known as They overlook this wonderful site of Roman ruins. Of course, that's post-Roman, but here was a Roman, small Roman city that uh, was covered over and uh, many of the columns and some of the best stones were used for later construction during the Islamic period. And then uh, during the time of the Lisbon earthquake, which produced a tsunami, this in fact was totally covered over at that time. In the we entered the medieval mosque area. Uh, it was also a burial place. And uh, the beautiful Carrera marble here clearly had been borrowed from the Roman Maria, Roman columns that were moved. This was a boarding school, madrasa, and uh, this would have been the site of uh, both classrooms and also the fountains would have been here. And you can still see the brilliance of the tiles. So this was from the 14th century. Roman ruins right by the side of the Islamic relics and both took advantage of the natural springs because they were bathhouses, hammams, and have the beautiful, beautiful gardens you see this side of the mosque, uh, madrasa complex, again the use of the Roman columns in the detail. At the entrance to the mausoleum, uh, we are the bodies of the current king's father, Muhammad V, mausoleum. Uh, buried here are Muhammad V, current king's grandfather, Hassan II, current king's father, and uncle of Prince Abdul. Uh, alongside this, which uh, undertaken in 1961, took 10 years, is a mosque without a minaret and another beautiful white building where in the complex that was the site of the unfinished minaret uh, the unfinished mosque which was a building project of the Sultan Yaqub the same one who uh, came to the city and uh, reinforced it and made it a fortress uh, we're looking now here at the minaret which is under scaffolding and uh, it's about halfway done. It was originally intended to be over 80 uh, meters high. It's now about 45 meters in the center. King Mohammed V. To our left, his son has 
Jackson II and the uncle Prince Albert. This is the ceiling inside the mausoleum. Wonderful detail. That's why it took 10 years to construct. So we're about to go into the Casbah, and this was the setting for a number of movies. The outside here, including the most recent Mission Impossible. So we're now in the Casbah, looking out onto the unfinished uh, mosque. So just the marina. The sala in the distance, on the edge of the Kasbah, you can see it was built out over the Wazar Rules in <coughs> Rabat. The bed was on the loft upstairs. And the windows look out onto the central area, <coughs> which includes the traditional uh, layout of the Riyadh, and this one had, of course, the elevator. You can see off to the side. And nice bath area, but again, inexplicably no shower curtain. <coughs> Driving along the coastal road on our route from Rabat to Casablanca. After a bit of searching, we found a museum uh, here in Casablanca. This building was originally constructed as a home for Jewish orphans. And uh, later, in the early 60s, it became a, a yeshiva and um, then interior was changed over to the Now Seaside, Casablanca, it's very lovely. We've passed neighborhoods of huge mansions, homes that uh, were all uh, walled in, looking out onto the lighthouse area. It's very busy, uh, Corniche, lots of restaurants and cafes and Expensive shops, as one would expect. And, uh, clearly, what happens at Casablanca stays in Casablanca. Off in the distance, see the minaret from the Hassan II Mosque, second largest mosque in the world. Red is 656 feet tall. Okay, we're a little closer. Get to see some of the detail at the top. And it's Friday, so uh, the white flag is out and calling everyone to worship. And then the boat room, Charlie Chaplin room, bedroom uh, in Casablanca. And we've decided we're just going to stay here because it is elegant and uh, comfortable. And uh, they just can't seem to do enough for you here. This is the uh, bathroom. Just a few feet from the restaurant, which works out really well. And the mini bar is included. 
and it's just very yummy and comfortable in this room. Approaching the mosque. Some very impressive detail work. Knesset, Beit El, and Casablanca. inspired by Chagall, each one of the tribes. Just numbers. This is a, the view from the women's section. In the garden of the synagogue, we have the founders listed. So, where Kiddush takes place. And here are the yard site plaques. Vegetation is cactus, uh, 
we see, you know, both goats and uh, horses and um, not too much else, but that might have to do more with the growing season. You see that the construction looks like it's dependent on adobe style bricks. We're in Marrakesh at our Riyadh and um, if we were concerned that they didn't know it was our anniversary, we shouldn't have been. This is the entrance to our sitting suite. area here. Overlooks the trees and the pool area down below. This is the entrance to our bedroom. sitting area. Somebody got the memo. So, oh, a sitting area. Great. That's number three. And then we have another terrace. In case the other sitting areas weren't enough, we have another rooftop sitting area. And then into the um, unmentionable. Rose petals. Of course, I don't know how I'm going to use the shower like this. one has to have rose petals everywhere so we're going to try to try to be comfortable here for the next the Marrakesh market and, uh, this is not far from our hotel so that is the lamp area more lamps. So in the open market square, you can get everything from turtles to spices, <clears throat> so hats, baskets, broth. Pounding and preparing seasons, the spices. Approaching the grand marketplace. About six o'clock in the evening, and all of the carriages are lined up, ready to take the uh, tourists back to their buses or around town. Off the distance is the minaret. Just to give you an idea of the sheer size. unfinished mosque from the late 12th century, about a hundred years after the founding of Marrakesh uh, and this Berber dynasty. Uh, the orientation was found to be just a wee bit off, so they abandoned construction and continued the construction on the other side of this wall. You can see originally it was designed to have the, the orientation spot and the area where the Imam would address the congregation, uh, but it was, as I say, abandoned. So this, we're not looking at ruins, we're looking at uh, a bit of construction that they just walked away from. Taking the original Kasbah of the city. Now we're inside the Kasbah. 
and we're going to head out to some tombs that originally had been hidden by the subsequent dynasty, walled in, not destroyed, but walled in for over 200 years. They're rediscovered. Gardens around the tombs and the trumpet. Inside one of the private offices inside the palace of the Bahia, uh, the rooms are uh, have similar elements in that you have the mosaic floor, you have the stucco trim as the first tier. And then the ceiling would be the cedar wood, but it might be a different shape. It could be a flat roof, a uh, ceiling, ribbed, domed. Uh, so each room has, using the similar elements, but each done uh, just uh, in a unit. In the marketplace, uh, this had been the Jewish Quarter, so it's still known as the Market of the Jewish Quarter. Awesome. All, the, all the work. They have all around different quotes. Jewish quarter in the synagogue. side stock of boxes so you don't have to go too far the women's section there's a lamp looks these lamps are done in memory of one of the rabbis otherwise a prominent member This synagogue appears to still be in active use. A view from the women's section. Rashid, thank you. And uh, so, could you explain what you're doing? Yes, I make it black soap and water and a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And then you shape it. Yeah, shape it. Thank you. These are the piles of wool. And that's what's piece by piece. And he chooses the designs. He rolls them and shapes them. 
this way. In the outskirts of, Mar of Marrakesh, you can see the distance, not too far, the atlas. Snow on the peaks, and there are two ski resorts in the Atlas Mountains. Clouds. Take a nice spot to view the mountains in the valley below. Very, very red here. Stop by the side of the road. Cobra Road. Yes. Come on. We're at the Atlas at about 4,700 feet. Here, some homes built right into the mountain. And it's pretty chilly up here at this point. Yeah, from the band, it's sick here. Over here, we did a lot of music. Primarily built this kasbah in the 18th century, renovated in the 19th century, and a essentially abandoned in 1956 at the time of independence. Still this is a good nest for stork. We should in summer with yeah. a lot of storks oh, in the area. Yeah, yeah, big one. Big yeah. one. Sure. Yeah. We, we saw it in um, the Yeah, yeah, well, yeah still some of them there. These yeah. pigeons have this blue hue to them. And you see the paper oh, and the in which the Sultan would uh, receive people and uh, offer judgments as necessary. Woodgate. <laughs> Appreciation for the, the detail on these doors. So, this is silk covered near the uh, ceiling. The ceiling is cedar and it all the work and the, the usual uh, stucco and such, but these are silk. Uh, hangings that are affixed to the wall. Um, typically these would have been examples of gifts given over time to the Pasha. And then the ceramic walls and uh, floor. One of the reception rooms is, looks out onto the, uh, the mountains and the town across the way, and also the livestock down below. From a receiving room, another receiving room, we get a beautiful view through this uh, picture window of the village beyond. It's become now a football. You can see a town far off. As you can see the, uh, uh, the mosque. Corn, yes. Corn and apples, because the area we know also has the agriculture with wheat and barley, and also with a lot of trees of. Uh, uh, a heating element in this 
big, beautiful, but very the top cool this past by. where we are right now, the rooftop. You can look out onto some of the fields and uh, the uh, private quarters. See, they have their own um, cows and sheep and all. Now, and beyond that side already is uh, unsafe. The rooftops are in danger of collapsing. And also, of the family, people living in the village, also they can't take, you know, the what's you call it, the poplar. Mm -hmm. Appropriate to use for the roof. For the round oh, roofs, yeah. yeah. For the yeah. yeah. For couples, use. Yes. 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 Uh, what are you doing there? Yeah. Shepherd. Protecting his flock of sheep and goats along the mountain. There's some of them bleeding. Small village, still inhabited, still tending the fields down below. And, uh, it's a beautiful canyon area, gorge. See the sheer cliffs. On our way to the Kasba, passing a number of olive trees. The fruit is some shkadia, some almonds. Also on the way to our Kasba. The bridge, before it's the no bridge, you have to cross from the river there, all right? Or in the winter or in summer, also when there is a lot of water. So we cross by donkey, right? But this uh, government built this only. The Berber family it started with eight. And the uh, Arabic is started with son of Ben. Ben. Ben, yes, Ben. But we're going to say Arabic. Ait is family. Yeah. Ben is son. Yes. The juniper and also the bamboo. Well, let's see. The bamboo is used for decoration also inside the vine. Oh, yes. The vine. Yes. yes. You can see it. The vine. Looking down a little bit on the Kasba, it's one of the original homes. And these couple are still inhabited. The work on the outside has been renovated in an authentic manner. And most of the rest of the quarter, where we see collapsed roofs and the like, they are not inhabited. Some may have little storefronts, but families do not live there. This wall, just above the plateau I was standing on, the, is original and part of the 16th century original construction of the cusp. The guardhouse, perfect vantage point to see down each direction, across the river, down into the cusp. the way who's coming from other areas. He's seen from the top at the gate house for the guards. You can see the uh, snow on the atlas. Original gates to this Kasba. The gardens that were originally 
developed by an artist by the name of Majorelle. He's a French artist. And after his death, they were taken over by the municipality. And then, not too long afterwards, by Yves Saint Laurent. Um, so it has a number of different species that are not native to Morocco. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look through and also through the Museum of Berber Culture. some idea of the variety here. <laughs> and come up in a tree alongside a cactus. American some idea of the remarkable variety of cacti here. About to go into the Madrasa bin Yosef here in the Medina. Inside the Madrasa, this is uh, the ovulation area. And up here would be the dorm rooms. And go through the entrance into the small mosque. That would be part of the, again, the madrasa, uh, but used only as a mosque. Uh, this madrasa, Ben Yosef, was built in the 16th century and used actively as a school, as a madrasa, up till 1959. So in, the, in the first floor dorm area, and um, again, all the rooms will be arranged around uh, an open, tiny courtyard. And uh, be typically two students, there's a little window there, two students, one student just coming out now, Um, they'd have room to cook in the courtyard and through the door there would be uh, a way of, for one of the teachers or leaders to check if the student was up for early prayers and if so then uh, the bread would be delivered and if not then that person did without bread the day and would remember to get up early the following morning. These were the upstairs rooms. Again, a window out onto the courtyard. And these would be used as steps up to extra storage area above the ceiling. Some of the leather drying outside the mosque or across from the original heart of Marrakesh. Uh, part of a city is always defined by a mosque, a madrasa, a mom, a bakery. Okay, this is the uh, high auction area where everybody gets to bring their hides for review and then they can sell them for further use. Going through the fruit, fresh fruit and vegetable market now. Mm -hmm. 
So these are what's the that? all olives? Right. Right. What's for us? That's the that one that's in the middle of the main square in Marrakesh now, we see some women doing kimna. Fella who has his monkey ready to entertain. Activity of all sorts. Different foods, selling food, juice. The snakes are taking an afternoon nap. Our suite from the terrace here at the Riyadh, which is really rooftop terrace, just beautiful. And today is uh, probably the warmest, brightest day we've had in Marrakesh. <laughs> 